Kenzie K, Wild 94 on the Vegas Party Station, here with the very talented London Brown. Hey, hey, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm really excited to have you in today, and one of the reasons is I'm a big fan of ballers. Oh, sweet, man. I never saw people watch the show, so I don't I know. watch it all the time. I'm obsessed. Now, and I say this with respect, your character drives me absolutely insane. Yeah. Because you're doing a good job, though. It means you're playing him well. Yes, yes, yes. I, I appreciate it. I mean, I don't ever get um, offended by that. People like to give the discretion, but I mean, I I know that that's not me, so <laughs> I don't I don't mind people becoming uh, emotionally involved in the show. Right. So it helps me to stay remembered. So that works for me. Do you feel, or in what way do you identify with Reggie? Because I know that helps as an actor to find that connection. Uh, the connection is like just the side of Reggie that's loyal to his best friend. And just making sure that no one's gonna take advantage of him, and that's what that's what real friends do anyway. Right. He may not be going about it the right way, cause he's a little young and immature. But at the end of the day, he's looking out for his friend. So at least in season one, but by season four, he's maturing and actually making some decent decisions. So he is. He's a little better this season. He's a little better. This I'm season. liking it. I'm not at the season finale yet, but I'm real close. I'm like an episode away, and I'm like. You've given him good advice so far. Yeah, he's work, he's doing he's trying to he's trying to grow. So slowly but surely he's he's coming around and people are starting to like him. What is it like working opposite The Rock? Uh Dwayne is, you know, he's a really nice guy. And he's always just um there's no ego, so that creates an atmosphere where everybody is able to be cool and not be tripping. Um, because he don't have an ego. But none of the actors do. I think because everyone's just very professional. We just come in, lay it down. And have a good time, and then see what they decide to keep during the edits, and uh, keep it moving from there. But everybody's cool. Dwayne is super inspirational, and whatever mm-hmm. you think he is, he is that. He's a big, he's a big deal. But you forget because working one on one with him, you just forget that he's the biggest star in the world. Because it just be, it'd be a scene where just like this, it'd be just us and the crew. Mm-hmm. And then you go on Instagram, then he's. Uh, He's in Dubai with five million people <laughs> outside of his movie premiere. So you're like, dang, he's a big deal. Has but he's there cool. been uh, like a learning experience with working at Ballers? Like, what have you taken away from being a part of that set? Um, I think that just to um, just to stay ready, you know, because mm-hmm. they always have these interesting changes within the script or what have you. And uh, working with Dwayne, you kind of just you learn things to do off screen, just how nice he is mm-hmm. and professional. So I'm like, okay, when my time comes, these I've, I've made my notes about how to do things and how to move because Dwayne doesn't. So you know how to carry yourself. Yeah, like for him, him. we was on. We have to be on set, let's say in Miami, the first two seasons. I remember just catching him on Instagram or social media, and we had if our call time was 5 a.m., he'd be in the gym at three. That's something that I did learn. So before uh, I'm on set, I definitely will hit the gym. Just, oh, you work out now before your scenes? Oh, no. I mean, I, I work out just earlier. I, okay. I try to work out, but with him, I say if he can work out before getting on set, then I can do it. But I see why, because it creates a focus mm-hmm. um, that you need to to work on a show like that. So I like that. It probably yeah. really wakes you up, gets you ready. Yeah, it gets you going. I hit the gym today, 5 a.m. I'm, I'm ready for the day. See, you're going to embarrass so me. Stop. I now try I to be focused, man. <laughs> I'm going to. Now, as you're also a comedian, not yeah. just an actor. You have a lot of skills. I know you're awesome like, at impressions and everything. But as a comedian, is there any joke, especially nowadays mm-hmm. in this world, that you're just like, I'm not going there? Um, Personally, I don't think I, I addressed um, what they call them. Like, the mentally challenged. I probably won't go there. Yeah. Um, That might be about it. Really? Yeah, I think that's that might be by or because I, I I had some jokes about old people, but they were my family, so I don't think that I don't know if that counts. But I'm not I don't like just picking on people just to be picking on people. Mm-hmm. That's not I don't really get anything from that. But I think I think most things are pretty open, can be addressed really. I know, know some people are a little scared because we've seen some careers go down from some jokes. Well, gone, yeah, really I mean that's that. the, that's the thing about it is just that I don't th- I, I think that. We are now in a very, you know, sensitive, we're in a sensitive society now. So you can't, things that were cool just 10 years ago, you cannot even kind of think about saying. But just as it is on that side, the other side is 
I've heard all kind. Com- we've heard our president say all things, all kinds of things <laughs> that we didn't think would ever be cool from a not from someone leading the country, but he right. says them. So I guess maybe it just depends on who you are then. So if Trump, if Trump wouldn't say it, maybe then it's off limits. May I mean, I just I think it just comes down to like, yo, if you got money, money, power, privilege, you can say. Dude, this dude, the stuff that he said, I'm like, how do you say that and then become president? Like, <laughs> I mean, it didn't even, it wasn't like kind of like, oh, did he, did he mean that? He was very, very clear about what he said. I was like, yo. But then you get a comedian whose job is to make people laugh. We know that. That's what his career is built on. Mm-hmm. And if they say anything, even dancing around the topic, then it's, if we get it's all this backlash and, you know. So it is scary, man. It's like, wow, because we, we don't have that freedom as artists to be artists. Well, that being said, is there a comedian that you used to look up to or maybe now do for, like, their comedy style kind of inspired you at all? Yeah, I like listening to um, this comedian by the name of Patrice O'Neill. He's from Boston. He passed away. Uh, Patrice O'Neill was very... He said a lot of things that I... He spoke from a perspective that I definitely understood very thoroughly. Um, I like listening to... Chappelle now, the Chappelle okay. the Chappelle now is different from the Chappelle from the nineties. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you like better about him now? I just like how now it's very conversational in a way where it's not it's not forced. So I just like to just hear him just just talk, and that's the thing that as comedians we we aspire to get to a level where it just becomes super conversational, mm-hmm. where it's not even about trying to make people laugh as much as it is about the honesty of it, and through that, people laugh. Right, you're like, it's like the truth is funny. Just just the good old truth. I mean, as comedians, we write and we put the twist on these things to make them funny, but ultimately, just get to a point where it's just very conversational. So now, I get it. I got to ask you, because you have a lot of good opinions. I've okay. seen some of your skits. We are a hip-hop station. Okay. Kanye just came out and said that he's stepping away from politics and he felt like he was used. Yeah. Do you forgive Kanye? Kanye... Kanye is see this is the thing about <laughs> this is the thing about what what this is cultural. Like what makes this interesting is that like our black artists would do stuff like that and and what we take on in the black community, we just like, yo, we feel like sometimes when they do these acts, we're like, why you turn your back on us, right? Mm-hmm. And they turn <clears throat> excuse me, they turn their backs on us, then go and be cool with everybody else, or I people of power. And then after those people of power say, ah, we cool on you, then those same people want to come back. Now we be like, yo, why you turn your back on us the first time? You got to, in general, you got to hold, you got to stick with the people who hold you down mm-hmm. and, and, and and go from there. So now I don't know what he got from that. I don't know if he, if, if the t- ticket sales went up. I don't know what he gained from that. But now black people are really like sketchy on yeah. We like... We just want to go back to graduation. Go back to go back to that yay. When so if he was like that, you'd be down with him again. If, if he Kanye, went back to it, uh, if he went back to it, yeah, I would have to really see where he was because right now I'm just kind of cool on yay. You like, need some consistency. I knew, our reputation is based on our consistency, and we should have knew something was up when he, when Jay left him alone or when he stopped messing with Jay. We shouldn't. I'm sure the Jay. Red flag. Jay, yo, uh, Kanye, you got to slow down and make sure that you're making the proper decisions. <laughs> and Ye was like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. We should have. That was a flag. All these flags Ye gave us. When he came up, when he started making them, them albums, he was like, yo, go back to graduation, flashing lights, Kanye. Mm-hmm. Uh, through the wire, Kanye. When he started leaving that, we was like, Okay, we was like, okay, maybe with music, we was like, maybe he's going music, artistic, nah, 808s. We was like, all right, kid, cut it. We like, I like the kind. But when he started going further, we was like, oh, man. It's like when you're dating somebody and all of a sudden, like, they got a new password on the computer and then a new password on their phone. And then, like, a, you're like, oh, God, it's getting worse. Something's, something's going, up. Something's, something's going up. On. We, didn't, we didn't pay attention to the flags because we like yay. And we like mm-hmm. yay. And we like the shoes and everything. We should have said, man, what's going on? So hopefully he does come back. To get something really grounded. We'll we'll tell through the music. Okay. Yeah. So tonight you're gonna be at Tampa Improv. Yes. Um tonight, two shows tonight, Tampa Improv, two shows tomorrow, one Sunday. Uh I'll be headlining featuring my boy to hear more. You can uh, also catch him on all Dev Digital. To hear more is from St. Louis, but we uh met in LA working the scene there. 
He's going to be super funny, super dope guy. And uh, we're going to have a good time, man. No, I'm really excited to watch you stand up because you've done an awesome job on Ballers, which you guys are filming another season, correct? Yes. Thank you for those watching who pushed us into a fifth season. Uh, thank you. It allows me to pay my rent. <laughs> And, and I put gas in my car, so thank you so much, man. Awesome. Check out Ballers and check him out over the weekend at the Tampa Improv. Awesome. Those nails.